I'm Polly Putalu, the publisher of Papiot Press, and I'm here in Dominica, often known as the nature island of the Caribbean. Welcome to this edition of All Papiot. Here is Gone to Drift by the Jamaican writer Diana McCauley. It's an award-winning young adult novel, and I really wanted to publish it because I so admire its commitment to a knowledge of the environment especially of the Caribbean Sea. It's also a sparkling coming-of-age story about a Jamaican boy in search of his beloved grandfather, a fisherman who is lost at sea, gone to drift. Here is Diana to read an extract from Gone to Drift. I hope you enjoy. I'm Diana McCauley, I'm a Jamaican writer and I'm going to be reading to you from my book, Gone to Drift. I am thinking about the boats of my life, starting with a spit surfboard my brother Luke and I found washed up in Great Bay one morning. We played with it in the shallows, daring each other to push it into deeper water. We were very young. And then we found a canoe made from one entire cotton tree. The tree fell, the inside scooped out, as long as the legs of the long dead fisher who made it. We rocked it to get it loose, but it was too heavy for us. So the seven Saunders men got it to the beach on one of the carts the fishers used to move their engines around. We scrubbed her sides with sand, and we found an almost finished can of paint on a rubbish heap, and we named our boat in crooked but proud letters, Birdie. I have always liked bird names for boats. Birdie had no modern features, but you could see the marks of the tools that had used, been used to make her, although where we sat in the bottom was worn smooth by contact with human bodies. The hull was a half circle, so there was no keel. If a man sat in her, she settled low in the water and had almost no freeboard. But Murdy never leaked. She was the most watertight boat of my life. She was most suited for a river, though, we thought, not for the risks of the sea. Although we knew the Arawak Indians, who were Jamaica's first peoples, made such boats and went to sea in them. Murdy was our playground and playroom. Not that we knew such things existed then. And there my boyhood and my youth was spent, in half of a felled cotton tree, a tree that lived on, a tree that went to sea. Before our father took us to sea, we merely played with the sea. Going to sea with our father was different. It was the first step to becoming a fisher. And Luke went to sea without me. While I waited for his return, I told myself stories about Birdie that she had been made and used by a young Arawak prince. I like to think I had Arawak blood in me. I came, we all came, from a line of fishermen. A childhood memory now comes to me. I am searching for sea snails to use as bait, combing the rocks, pulling them up from where they fastened themselves by tiny suckers. I would hold them up and they would send out their tiny bodies with two black antennas at the tip like eyelashes. They would try to hold on to my fingers with their suckers. The sea snails all had black flecks on their shells, but were shaded differently, green and pink and gray. I am on a rock in the Caribbean Sea. There are sea snails all around me now, and I realize they are a source of food. They can neither fly away nor scuttle deep into a crevice in the rock where I now lie. These tiny morsels, full of bits of shattered shell, these will keep me from starving.